The fourth and final item within the cervical radiculopathy clinical prediction rule is the distraction test. Note that the distraction test can be done in seated and it can also be done in supine, but I'm going to show the seated version. Now, out of these four items, the distraction test is the only easing test. A, B, and C right here are provocative tests. This is an easing test. So you have to have some radicular symptoms at rest before you do this test, because if there's no radicular symptoms to start, there's nothing to ease. So the patient must already have some radicular symptoms, probably in the upper extremity that's affected, before you do this test. Okay. So again, the patient's in seated right here. And the PT is going to passively distract the patient's neck, so pulling it vertically upward in an attempt to separate each cervical vertebrae. Remember those three movements that normally increase radicular symptoms in a classic cervical radiculopathy. Those are cervical extension, cervical lateral flexion toward the affected side, and cervical rotation toward the affected side. And the reason those increase radicular symptoms is because they close down or narrow each of the intervertebral foramina where the nerve roots exit. And if you compress those nerve roots because the intervertebral foramina are more narrow, well then you might increase radicular symptoms. This test does the opposite. By pulling the vertebrae apart, by separating them, you actually widen the intervertebral foramina and create more space for the nerve roots that exit and release some of that potential compression on them. And that's why you would get symptom reduction with the distraction test. So you can see here, patient's in seated and I am gripping her head on either side with my hands. Technically, my hands are over her ears. In practice, most patients don't care about that. They just wanna get better. But if you by chance do run into a patient who does not like your hands over their ears, it's easier to pull on their head without being over their ears when you position them in supine. But for the most part, this test will work. So the PT is gonna passively distract the patient's neck vertically upward, as you can see here, to separate each cervical vertebrae. And you're gonna monitor for symptom reduction. Again, a positive test is gonna be familiar radicular symptom reduction in the affected shoulder and or upper extremity. Remember, you need to have some radicular symptoms at rest. It could be numbness, and the numbness could get a little bit better. It could be tingling. There could be less tingling with distraction. It could be burning, shooting pain. It could be any one of those things, but those need to be present at rest, and they would be reduced in the case of a positive test. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.